episode number 190. I am your host, Norman Sonzo. Joining me today is Kyle. Hello, how are you all doing? And also joining us is Cal Payne. Hello, everyone. Good to meet you. How is everyone doing? I'm not answering oh, that. You didn't answer me, you ask it. How rude. Sorry. Uh, no, I- <laughs> as you can hear my voice, I'm not at the best. Like, this, this is a funny story. Like, two weeks ago, I came in with a sore throat and, yeah, it wasn't too well. Went to the doctor and stuff and, yeah, I'm pretty recovering or recovered. And last Monday, I got a sore throat again. And I'm just like, what? What is this madness? I'm not going to visit the doctor. There's got to be doctor bills. No, I'm not in Canada. <sighs> but what about you, Kyle? Well, I live in Scotland and we've got free healthcare, so I'm just going to sit here smugly. Oh, you. <laughs> Besides- no, no, I've... I'm no, I'm sorry, man. I hope you're doing all right. Like generally, both of you, because I've just realised that out of the three of us, I'm the healthiest one, and if the guy from Scotland is the healthiest one, then we've got a problem. <laughs> uh, I got no idea. Uh, so you're healthy. How about you, Cal? Doing all right. Just had that little sore throat this morning, but that lozenge took care of it. Um, otherwise, it's been pretty busy. You got pony work and normal work and. All the things in between. <laughs> so which one takes up most of your time? The pony work or the real work? Depends on the day. The real work, if I'm, if I'm actually working a full day, it's about half and half because it's like, get up in the morning, do real work, come home, do pony work till I go to bed. <laughs> oh, so it's just working all day long then? Pretty much. Right. Uh, at least the pony work is kind of relaxing, I guess. <laughs> I remember a while back, you're the admin for the Steven Universe um, website. Uh, I think it's uh, keep Beach City weird. Oh like no, that, um, Beach City Bugle. Yeah, uh, I am. I'm the yeah. main admin, but I have a team that basically runs the site for me. So it's really nice. <laughs> Let's me keep busy on the pony side of things, and yet we still have a, a decent fan site for Steven Universe and stuff like that. It's getting close to three million hits. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. We will talk about that more, but right now, I mean. It's been a while since we had you on, Cal, and the last time I think was, you know what, I don't even remember. I think I was in Ohio still when I was last on, which has been a oh, while. God. Where are you now? Where are you at now? Uh, back in Michigan here in the States, back near home. Sorry, the American geography is derpy for me, so I got no idea, but judging by that distance, it's going to be far. Not too far. It's like a six-hour drive, but it's good to be back home. I'm in the state that's surrounded by a bunch of lakes. <laughs> it's the easiest one to pick out. Oh, not potatoes? Oh, no, not, well, we do have a, <laughs> we do actually grow a lot of potatoes around here, but that's like the only part in the state that grows lots of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, potatoes are nice. You can mash them and you can fry them. They are good, and we even have a festival for them around here. <laughs> a really? potato nice. festival, yeah. <laughs> that is... That is actually fantastic, because I, I still maintain the potato is the most underrated vegetable out there. The potato, if you think about it really, it's a nice side dish. It can be eaten any way you want. You can mash them, you can fry them, you can cut them. Any, like, it's the perfect side dish. That's side all dish here in Scotland is the main course. <laughs> Depending on what the <laughs> kind of potato you're cooking. If you're cooking baked potato, then... That's yeah. what's the great thing about a potato. You can use it anywhere. Food wise, not not just not just anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could use it in anything. S- soups by itself, turn it into French fries. <laughs> true, true. And if you guys watch The Martian, they had potatoes in Mars. So- oh yeah, I mean, they're actually that was actually a good idea to grow those. They're actually rather potatoes are actually rather nutritious. If you eat the if you eat the skin and all that stuff, so he's able to actually <laughs> live pretty well on potatoes and rationing the other stuff he has so he gets all of his minerals and vitamins. That was pretty cool. That, that was pretty cool. Like that movie when I watched it, I, I heard a lot of good things about it, but just watching it and like looking, hey, he's cooking potatoes. Like, oh yay, cool. Potatoes in space. Yay. Um, but oh, getting back on track, getting back on track. Um, Cal, you, you recently went to Nightmare Nights, yes. right? I went to Nightmare Nights, um, it was last weekend, and it was a lot of fun. Very rainy. Oh, really, no? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with the weather news, but that Hurricane Patricia was coming through. Um, that hit, mm-hmm. oh, what was it? It hit Mexico really hard. And we were on like, and since it's so big, we were on the outer fringes of it. So it was just raining and raining and raining. And then it stopped raining. I left Texas, got back to Michigan. And then the remnants of the hurricane hit Michigan and I got the rain all over again. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. So anyway, uh, give me a second, guys, because there's another guy going to come oh, in. Another guest. Ooh. Uh, oh no, it might be someone even better. No, no, it's just oh, that oh, guy. Oh, just that one, the one with the freaky hair. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hello, <laughs> that guy here, that guy speaking. <laughs> hey. Yeah, and joining us is James. Hey James, how are you doing? Hey, man? sorry, I'm here for just like in a flash. No, seriously, I am because my family and I were going to go watch The Martian in a couple of hours. And we have to get ready for the movie, it's like in an hour and something, something minutes. By the way, James, we're recording, and yay, this is called going in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, funny enough, you're talking about The Martian. We were talking about The Martian just now, about how, well, spoilers, so not, we're not going to talk about it. Don't tell me anything. I did my best to step away from the internet, basically, to not get the movie spoiled <laughs> for me. I am not, I, okay. I am not going to watch that movie with any of you guys spoiling the movie for me. So don't, <laughs> yeah. don't you dare. All right. Okay, let's just say that they're in space. God damn oh. it, Norman! Spoilers! <laughs> <laughs> hey. You know, I'm worried about saying anything, because you see, I know nothing of the film. I don't know what happens in it, but I'm worried that I'll say something that will actually spoil the film accidentally. <laughs> like, I really want to say something stupid, like the Martians are from Jupiter, and I'm worried that's going to be in the film. <laughs> God damn oh, it, well, Kyle! You, Kyle. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> But anyway, let's move on to the first news. The first news. And the creators of Twilight Secret Ship Fic folders closing down. What's that all about? Well, from what I'm able to know is that um, according to their website, they started to shut down because of just being too large. That's really all I've been able to garner from that. They just kind of ran out of, um, I guess, motivation for running such a large um, corporation. If I'm not mistaken, they're not getting paid, right? Like, except for when they go to conventions? As far as I know, yeah. That's really all they... Besides having their vendor tables and selling things like that, they don't really get paid. And I wonder how much of a profit they're actually making on that. I mean, they do sell... They sell out every single time. Mm, but I, I don't think they're getting much. Because if you think about it, let's just do some basic math in our heads. Mm-hmm. Printing, that's going to cost them. Traveling, that's going to cost them. Oh, that's going to cost him a lot. Staying in a hotel, costing them more, unless they have friends who live nearby, and vendor people. Don't they get, don't they get <laughs> compensated for that? Don't they get like, uh, covered when they go to conventions? Depends if they're like an actual guest or something like that. And one of the things we gotta also remember is that they are a team and not one person, so any money they do make has to be split up amongst them, I imagine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's true. But, well, Besides that, like the team for the secret ship fig folder, there. If I I read the news a bit, and if I do understand right, they're closing down because well, they just don't want to handle the business anymore. Like from what you say, helping, they just don't want to handle it. And if I'm not mistaken, all of the things that they promise they're gonna fulfill, and then close down. They're gonna. Uh... Their big November sale still, and um, at least one of the nice things that they're doing is they're still going to have like the card and box assets online, so people can at least make their own. And I always like their game because I, I've seen it in action, and it's really interesting. And it's one of those games where what I really appreciate is you can do it yourself. You can print it at home and cut it out if you have the time. But other than that, it's just okay. I just want to go to the con and buy it from you guys. Can I? Oh yeah, I think one of the best things about them um, letting you print it yourself and stuff is that it really does help, you know, people outside the U.S. because they don't go to a lot of out of the United States conventions. Yeah, so it is like a worldwide thing. And I've watched my friends play and stuff. It looks like fun. I just don't under I just don't really understand it. It's fun watching everybody, you know, come up with different ships though. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like the game is just awesome. Like. The structure, the you know, everything's put out, laid out there, like, ah, the game. I, I just need to print it out, understand the rules, and play with some friends. You know, there is one thing that people always seem to uh, not ignore 
because that's a, that's a very bad word. I don't like to use that word. It's like they seem to forget that because one thing ends, that doesn't invalidate everything that has come before. Like you have mm-hmm. this wonderful card game that every I, I didn't play it, but every single one of my friends has. And that's not even an exaggeration or being hyperbolic. Everybody that I know has played the Twilight Sparkle Secret Ship ship Folder. Everybody has. That's Mm -hmm. big. That's kind of... They left their mark in the fandom and most likely inspired a lot of other people to create their own different car games. And if they have... And if they are moving on from this game, nobody says they are not going to try a new car game or a new thing. So it is a bit sad. But it's not it's not that bad piece of news. Oh well, but here's the thing, James. They're not um, stopping the ship fake game. They're closing down the company. No, that's that's oh, they're completely closed. Well, that doesn't matter. They will move on to other things. Oh, well, true, true. But you know, it's it. They they left their mark. They left on a high note because here's the thing. Big Brother Hasbro has their eyes on them, and I'm just thinking. How the hey do they survive this long? Yeah, I gotta agree. Yeah, with all the C and Ds that have gone around over time, it is kind of impressive that they've managed to last this long. And yeah, so they're going out on a high note. They didn't get C and D'd. They're just doing this out of their own volition. They have a very sizable and, you know, substantial game that people can print out and play. And there's a huge fan base. And when I was reading the comments, um, when I put up the news that it, they were closing down, there were tons of people that were saying, oh, well, we'll just make our um, own fan cards and stuff like that for it. So it'll survive well beyond the um, actual team. And you guys, like, as, like you guys said, they've left their mark, and it isn't really a sad thing. It's, it's another beginning. It's going to be just mm-hmm. controlled by the fans and stuff like that, and it'll be yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah, and it's that thing that, I mean, as you said, it's going to live on, but it's that thing that, you know, the company might still come back in its own way, even if it's under different owners. Because, I mean, on the, the site, they talk about how, you know, if people are willing to put up a good offer, they'll just sell the company wholesale. And it's the sort of thing that could actually end up in the fans' hands in more ways than just one. You know, if the right people get together, that company could eventually live on and actually continue on putting out new products. So you never know what will happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, it. But like you said, the fact that they're going out in a high, the fact that they survived this long, I mean, it, it's absolutely fantastic. And it's, you know, I'll be curious to see what they do after this and where they go next. Mm-hmm, I agree. They're a bunch of talented people. Mm-hmm. There's something to keep in mind, too. I wish I could have talked to them and understand their madness for this game. Yeah, you can still do it. You probably can still do it. I mean, they it's not like they're being all hush-hush about it. Heck, maybe now, maybe now that it's over, they might be able to reveal more stuff about it. <laughs> probably, probably, probably. Talking about fandoms, things dying down, things living, and just going to the fans. Kelping, you mentioned uh, Beach City Bugle. Mm-hmm. Care to explain how that came up? Um, it's pretty much how Like Equestria Daily came up. Um, it was like it's it's a show that I liked. Um, I knew at that point I knew how Equestria Daily was run. I liked the format and stuff like that. So I just decided to make a site based on that. I just really liked the I re- I liked the show, and there was a de- and it was starting to take off fandom wise. There was a lot of people that really liked it, and I had some I have some people that I know that actually work on the show and encouraged me to watch it and stuff like that back then when it was coming out. So. It was just a pet project, and it's <laughs> it's taken off since then. I'm looking through here, and it looks it looks eerily like EQD. It's like, oh my god, it looks the same. Am I? Why are they gems instead of ponies? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, there's a couple reasons why it's exact. It's pretty much the same, and one big thing is that it is indeed linked to Equestria Daily. So, we want something that's familiar to our, you know to the people that visit Equestria Daily. And it also matches mm-hmm. um Desu Daily, which we also have. So the the, the templates <laughs> are are relatively the same to keep that sort of, you know, vibe of familiarity. But um also <laughs> that that sounds like a, a nice excuse, but the, the, a bigger excuse is that I don't know how to code, so I kinda suck at that. <laughs> Yeah, but here's the thing, like, EQD has a nice structure, like, everything's set, like, everything has its point, and so on, 
and I'm looking through um, daily BCT Bugle, and it looks the same, and it works. It has that format where it's easy to read. Like, okay, you got your, instead of draw friends, you got draw things. So, yeah, you got that, and it's the same thing. And, well, you even have the news, like, just the news. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, it's it it's a format that, I mean, it works. So, if it works... You know, don't try and fix it. <laughs> I guess you could say mm. we, we've true that true. we've tried to put in you know all the things that people are used to on the original site and stuff like that. We have um tried to modify the tagging system a little bit so that's a little easier than it is on Equestria Daily or at least different. So there is that at least. But yeah, otherwise we just try to keep it pretty much the same because we just want to give people a familiar environment. To, you know, go into for, um, Steven Universe from Equestria Daily. Long story short, long story short, don't fix what I'm broke. Yeah. It, it, it works, <laughs> yeah. It, it works really well. Why, why fix it? Yeah, basically, yeah. And it's also a nice excuse because I can't, <laughs> I can't actually design a website. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it works, it works. That's why I say, that's all I have to say. It works because I'm looking at this and it's easy to figure things out, but I'm it, from EQD, so... How do you yeah. guys manage? Because, I mean, I, I don't know if... Uh, I know that you work on both EQD and and uh, Beach City Bugle. It's like it, handling two websites at the same time, keeping both of them updated with the news and the different pieces of fan art and all that, doing the roundups, it's like, that's a lot of work. How do you guys manage? Well, I got really lucky. Um, I ended up with a fantastic team. Um, I have a person on there. His name is, um, his name online is, um, Tails, but he goes by Emerald on our website. And he's just a powerhouse at posting and stuff like that. He really, really likes doing it. And he's, he, he, he allows, he basically runs the site while I just do administrative duties and stuff like that. So that has really helped. I don't think I could keep up with two sites since there's just so much stuff going on in the pony fandom. <laughs> and <laughs> since my jobs, right. my jobs, yeah, and my jobs have been picking up in real life too and stuff like that. So I'm really glad to have a team that's really focused on getting stories up and news and stuff like that and running the accounts. It's really nice. How do you guys manage when there is, uh, there is something that crosses fandoms? It's like you have, for example, the latest fluffle puff. I was checking on Beach City Bugle a few seconds ago, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen it there yet. Uh, are you, like, guys going to upload that, or does it have too much pony to be considered Steven Universe? It might be that it has a little too much pony. Uh, it ha the, the thing is, is that I think for crossovers like that, the main focus has to be on the original piece that you're reporting on. Since Flufflepuff and stuff like that is basically anchored in pony, it, it still is, you know... Basically a pony piece that just happens to be crossover with Steven Universe. Now if it was like Steven Universe visiting, visiting the pony world on the other hand, it might be more Steven Universe centric and it could go up on the site. It's kind of, it's just kind of blurred and, and I think we're just a little shy about including stuff on, uh, pony stuff in Beach City Bugle because there's actually people on there that are like, ew, there's pony over here, jeez. <laughs> What is this kids TV show doing in my kids TV show? How dare you? Uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to open up a wound, but recently some people were just mean to one. Oh, do you, do, we shouldn't be talking about oh, that. That's, yeah, that, that was that's, just that's, mean. that's a very unfortunate incident when a fandom gets so destructive and we in the MLP fandom, we know a bit of, a bit about that. Where, where a bit, I meant to say an awful lot, unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, that, if we talk about that in this podcast, that would be like the pot calling the kettle black. It's not, it's not worth it. It's like, yeah, fandom has very mini, mini jerk faces. Whoop the freaking do, that's not news. <laughs> Mm, true, that's yeah. true. It's not about talking about that, it's about how you ignore it. Let's ignore it. Yeah. Let's not pay attention yeah, to it. That's just too grim dark for my To show. be honest, too grim. yes, the result of that incident was very grim dark. Yeah, I just realized we talk about bad. it too much. Yes, yes. And Cal, how does the new system work for this one? Do you still get submissions from the fans here, like how EQD works? Oh yeah, it, we get, um, we have an inbox set up for all of that. 
and people submit their stuff. But uh, it's it's a smaller site than um, Equestria Daily is, so the number of emails isn't as high. So we we've had to do, I think, more digging of our own volition to find things. But um, it does run on a very similar kind of um, system as Equestria system. Daily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we rely a lot on um, people sending stuff in and things like that. And it seems to work. It, we have had a, we still manage to post news um, for Steven Universe every single day. So there's enough content out there, that's for sure. I was just wondering because, like, EQD runs on a system where people just send in stuff. And, yeah, I mean... I'm looking through everything, and the comments are not that many compared to EQD. Oh, yeah. Well, to give you a comparison on the sizes of the sites, um, um, Beach City Beagle's been stable at like 20,000 views a day, while Equestria Daily is pretty stable at 200,000 to 300,000 views a day. <laughs> so it is hmm. much larger than than Beach City Beagle. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's good. It's like Beach City Beagle is Then good. again... Uh, Equestria Daily has like, uh, what, three years or four years of, uh, lead head on it's... Beach City Bugle. Like, Beach City Bugle is this, it was created this year, right? Oh yeah, like, yeah. um, July, something like that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, for a, for a blog that is that early, you guys have a lot of traffic. Yeah, like, so far. <laughs> I, I, we it, owe a lot of it to EQD. I- IQD, yeah. okay, granted, that was back in 2010, and, uh, like late 2010, early 2011, when Sethisto came up with the idea for Equestria Daily, but, mm-hmm. uh, it, it took, it took that blog a, an entire year to start getting a lot of traffic. Yeah, it took, um, Equestria Daily quite a while, actually, yeah. Let me think. Yeah, actually, a, a good, a good point about that is I've been compare, I had been comparing, um, Equestria Daily's, um, early numbers, because um to Beach City Bugles and um we were um growing faster than EQD at the same at the same point but that's that's un- until like the first pony summer that happened and there was like a billion uh. people in the fandom at that point so <laughs> that's when that's when Equestria Daily went crazy <laughs> so once we hit the which we're probably hitting about right now about the 6 month period for both sites um, EQD will rocket ahead of us, but yeah, we've been keeping on par at least with the early EQD stuff. <laughs> it's that the the blog grew up with the fandom, so the the growth on Equestria Daily was more. Uh, it, it was at the same scale as the fandom was growing. So after, I actually think that the outburst in fandom activity came after the end of season two, which um mm-hmm. like from what I'm seeing, every single person that still remains active within the fandom. Like, the the big majority came halfway through Season 2, and that's where the big pony craze exploded. Like, 2012 was the actual year of the horse. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, but with the Steven Universe, there was already kind of like a, an already built fandom. So when the website... Ha- I know that you guys, especially you, you, you got a bit of flack because yeah. you guys come from the MLP fandom. And a, a loud minority, which is always the case, every time a group gets screwed, they get screwed by the loud minority. They are like, we don't want these ponies filth in our fandom. <laughs> and everyone else was like, no, please, just let, let it keep going. Because the Steven Universe was this close from getting cancelled. In fact, it's still a bit with like one foot on the can and the other one hanging on a cliff. So uh, <laughs> it, 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 you guys are basically doing a service. If the if the show staff and the producers see that there is a fandom to do the and there is enough people to watch the show, they have a website to use as a hub to measure how many people are watching. They will keep making episodes, or at least they will have good reasons to keep making episodes. I will think that EQD is a big uh, um, was a big element when it came to the perpetuation of My Little Pony into six seasons. Oh yeah, um, it helped. It- it was kind of like a perfect storm kind of situation. It was, it was in the right place at the right time, and it. I don't know. I can't even really explain how it happened. There's probably a decent amount of luck in there, but yeah, there was just a, the right conditions for a fan site like EQD to take off. And nowadays, um, it's not as unique because back, because back then there was like really no Tumblr or. You know, and, and oh, yeah. other places, and other places for fan communities to like, you know, 
grow up and, you know, kind of, you know, create their own thing. So, because, yeah, Steven Universe has a huge, like, Tumblr following and stuff like that. So they have their, like, home base over there. They didn't really need, you know, a an aggregate website like Beach City Bugle. Yeah. Um, but back then when, you know, ponies came out, Tumblr was a really either a really new thing or hadn't come out yet, and no one had uh, – there was no real places on the internet. There wasn't a Derpy Burrow or Pony Burrow. Um, oh, there was a really Pony Burrow. There was a Pony Bureau. In, oh. There, yeah, in early 2011, there was Pony Bureau. And I remember because every time I tried to open a, a picture, the website crashed. Because it was <laughs> oh, coded yes, right. with the, it was, it was coded very, very badly. And then okay. they took, they took Pony Bureau, fixed the code, but they said, no, 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 this is a mess. We need something else. And they created Derpy Bureau. So they moved everything from Pony to Derpy. And I know that because <laughs> I used to, I have an account. I had an account on Pony Bureau. And when I moved to Derpy Buru, they gave me a badge that was like the last picture appearing on Pony Buru. It was on a smiling pony that Atriel yes. drew for the website as a closure. So Pony oh. Buru did exist in the early 2011, even though it was very, very, very badly coded. Yeah, you're right. I I, I forgot that it was um that it had been around since that. You know, four that years, moment. man, and a lot of things happen in four years, especially in this. Uh, mm. In this uh, culture nowadays, because I, I'm not saying that the culture is bad, but the world moves so fast nowadays. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. there's just so much going on all the time in Pony. It's just <laughs> you, nuts. <laughs> so much going on, he says as he's joining. <laughs> hey, don't be don't be mean to the guests, but Cal, you, you mentioned that you knew some of the show people, right? Oh yeah, for um for Steven Universe. Yeah, I I. I my biggest um influence is um is um Raven Raven Morrissey. Oh. Um, she used to work on Pony for the first um uh two or three seasons, something like that. Mm -hmm. And yes. she was a storyboarder on that. And I got to meet her at Everfree Northwest, and we became friends. And we've been skyping ever since. Whenever she's you know not horribly busy. And when she left Pony, she went down to the States and got a job at Cartoon Network and was one of the initial storyboarders for Steven Universe. So while that project was being, you know, produced, she showed me, you know, little promos, little clips and stuff like that. And I liked it and I couldn't wait for their show to come out. And now she's um, still a storyboarder, but she's also writing for the show, too. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. I remember that Raven did, was the one who came up with the I hallway sequence in Hurricane Fluttershy. She was the yes. one to blame for that one. Yeah, she did come up with that. She's got, yes. she's not only great with expressions, but she's great with, um, just, scenes. yeah, scenes. She's just really good. <laughs> oh, by the way, Cal, uh, do the show people know about Beach City Bugle? Um, I know Raven does. She was actually one of the people that encouraged me to, um, keep going at it after all those people were yelling at me back in March. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I got, um, so I assume they know, at least she knows. <laughs> mm, so I I'm guessing it's one of those hush hush. We know, but we're not going to say anything about it kind of deal. Yeah, it's kind of like the same thing with Equestria Daily. I mean, we know, okay. we know people on the staff go to Equestria Daily, but we don't know who exactly goes to Equestria yeah. Daily. They've only, whenever we've asked, we've only like, it's like in person and they'll say stuff like, oh yeah, we check it out, stuff like that. So. <laughs> Big Brother Hasbro is watching you. Careful with it. <laughs> yeah, come on, like, they, EQD has what, 600 million? So for, <laughs> the chances of Hasbro for going there, it's, mm, I say hi. <laughs> oh yeah, heck um. Blood twist reveal, Mike Bogle is actually the one behind their pivot. <laughs> Actually, actually, you guys are absolutely right. I still remember an article before even I was on EQD. It was back in 2011. Seth said even way back then in a post that um, he had gotten some like IP hits from Hasbro. So they were checking out EQD way back then too. Wow. Hasbro was like, "Oh damn, we have a fandom for this." Uh quick, commission DHX for another three seasons and three movies. <laughs> okay, let's see what what uh, these people like. Oh, there's a lot of humans in here. Okay, make them humans. And then Equestria Girls happen. 
no. That's actually how it happened. People people oh. forget about that Comic Con panel, but it was said by the guys who work on the comic that, yeah. <laughs> that the it's our fault. Humanization but... of the ponies led to Equestria Girls. Uh, yeah. But you know what? Okay, that that was strange, but here's something stranger. A pony Christmas album. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is a pony kind of Christmas. Oh, the vinyl. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. oh yeah. Uh, that, that's coming out soon. Like, when was... Uh, there's no specific time for it. Uh, let's I'm see. guessing Christmas. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> it goes, um, no, uh, it's coming out. Pre-order oh, October 27th. Uh, pre-order is October 27th oh, and on demand on streaming Friday, November 6th. Well, huh, that's strange, but still, it's coming out. And what? Well, you guys, I'm gonna leave you with this discussion. I have to uh, go. Sorry. It got, uh, it got late sure for me. But it's been, it's been awesome to be able to <laughs> hang out with you on this episode. No problem. Man. <laughs> Enjoy the movie, man. I, 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 yeah, I they, definitely will. Remember Jupiter. Spoilers, they're in space. Ah. <laughs> Hailed you. <laughs> all right. Anyway, but later, yeah, it, it's been awesome to all chat right. with you all, guys, and it's been awesome to finally right. hear again how you sound, Cal. We need to call each other like this more often. My God. <laughs> yes, it has been a while. <laughs> it, it really has been a while. Well, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Catch you later, buddy. See you. Bye-bye. So anyway, what? Ah, yeah, uh, yeah, I should... That That's that right. came kind of out of nowhere. Well, yeah, that came out of nowhere, right? <laughs> yeah, I, just, here's the thing. Okay, I don't mind a uh, winter holiday album. Like, well, what's the holiday you call? Um, Hearts Woman Eve album. I, I don't mind this. But Christmas? Right, like, right out of the box, Christmas. Because some people say Christmas is a Christian holiday about Jesus Christ, blah, blah, blah. Some people just say it's one of those holidays about Santa Claus and whatnot. And having the ponies, what? Well, yeah, you know, I mean, to be fair, My Little Pony and music have had a very odd relationship over the last few years. Anyway, like, and even back in the eighties, back when the original series was on, like, they had like vinyl releases of like little of My Little Pony tracks. And it's like you know, ever since French is Magic came out, like they had the two soundtracks that came out a couple of years back with Hot Topic on vinyl, like. And mm-hmm. th- th- like not not even a digital download or a CD vinyl. Oh, they have it. They have, they have it. Yeah, that's yeah, true. They have digital download and CD. I think so. But no, the thing is, it's a Christmas album. Out of out of all the things, it is a Christmas album. Yeah, that's kind of odd. It it's kind of odd. Yeah, considering they have promoted like Hearts Warming Eve, you think they would have maybe made like a something that sounded like Christmas music, but called it Hearts Warming Eve, you know, and just go with it that way. But I, I can see why they're doing it, though, because Christmas is a big thing, and... Yeah, it's coming close and whatnot. I mean, I'm not knocking it. I'm just questioning their oh, thing. Like, oh, yeah. I, I'm not saying that it isn't weird. I was, certainly was like, when it hit our inbox, I was like, what? We haven't even heard about this. And now it's all it's already up for pre-order. <laughs> no one even yeah. saw it coming. Yeah, okay. And, okay, the track listing goes, um, it's a pony kind of Christmas. Um, Jingle Bells. Deck the halls. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Silent night. Twelve days of Christmas. Last year I got a call for Christmas. Jolly old Saint Nick. Days goes by. Days days gone by. The heart carol. And out of all the tracks, like okay, um, minus the covers, some of the original songs, like what? And some of the covers are what? Well, do you know something, right? As strange as mm-hmm. this Christmas album is. It doesn't be the Star Wars Christmas album, Christmas in the Star Wars. Oh God. Which had, (laughs) and I quote, I kid you not, that's a real thing. Two things I can tell you about this which will blow your mind. Mm -hmm. Firstly, it has the first recording ever of John Bon Jovi. On, what? Yeah, (laughs) that was his first gig. His uncle produced the record and he was, he actually sang lead on a track. I I kid you not, you get the album, track five, Archie D2, we wish you a Merry Christmas. He sings lead. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. (laughs) <laughs> and second major fact about that record was that they released a single from it, right? Which was, and it has the best title of any Christmas song that has ever been released, which is, All right. <laughs> I love this so much. What can you get a Wookiee for Christmas and in brackets when he already owns a comb? <laughs> <laughs> that is that real. Is- that is the best. Uh, that's the best Christmas song name I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, it's, 
I don't know what to say about that album. It's like I remember finding it a few years ago, and I can't remember how I found it, but I kind of went, Chris's album. I'll download it. What? And just suddenly oh, went through oh. it. Like my mind got blown, especially when they, like that song played because it's like, what can you get? I will give a Christmas when he already owns a comb. And with like, with wow. that voice, with like a synthesized voice. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh my god. I, I need to, I need to catch that, man. Like, that, that, now, now that piques my interest. But talking about interest, like, I, I want to know, okay, here's the thing. The song, even though I'm questioning it because of why and this is strange, but I'm not knocking it because here's the thing. I love the performers. I love, um, the main six, like their voice actors, uh, I can't remember out of the top of my head, but just looking at some of the things, like, okay, you got Twilight Sparkle, Rainbow Dash, Applejack, Pinkie Pie, Rarity, Fluttershy, and the Phoenix Chamber Choir. So, that's, I'm guessing, the singers for the main six going to sing a holiday song. I can't wait. It's, it's, okay, it's going to be mean for me to say, but it's going to be one of those train wrecks that's waiting for to happen i i just can't wait and it's going to be glorious <laughs> wait you think it's going to be bad or no it's going to be good but it's one of those things where it's going to be so cringeworthy well no. but it's going to be good well it might not necessarily be that cringeworthy i mean it's like the music from mop is by and large oh, it's good, good it's good i mean it's like yeah, it's cringeworthy good. would be oh what would be i'm trying to think of something really spike bad spike singing spike singing yeah that yeah, <laughs> which which is also he's going to sing Jolly Old Saint Nick. So yeah, oh, well, it's not that he doesn't have. Mm-hmm. A, it's like it's not that he has a bad voice. It it's just that he, whatever he sings, he ends up doing things that make you kind of feel bad inside. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like okay, um, speculation and whatnot. Like I'm hoping this is one of those albums where they play serious and jokey at the same time. Like some of those. Um, anime albums, like anime albums have a mix of, okay, here's the song, we sing it seriously, and then here's where we kind of joke around, we talk and we just joke. That yeah. is fun. Even though I don't understand, but I can feel the funness in that. And this, I'm thinking they're not going to go to that extent, and they're going to play straight face, but I just can't wait, because, well, actually, Ball has an awesome singing voice. What can I say? <laughs> we wish you what? Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. It's Halloween! <laughs> yeah, well, it's not my fault that it's I did to release a Christmas album in November. You know, what, what are we going to say? I mean, the only thing that isn't that isn't semi-daft about this idea is that they didn't release it in July. That would have been epic <laughs> if they had just released a Christmas album in July. No comment. Hey, Kel, when's, when's Thanksgiving? Has it passed yet? Oh, no. It's not for, like, another month. <laughs> oh, okay. So, basically, yeah, it's close. It's close. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, what can I say? Kel, you got anything to say about this? Because... Uh, other than, uh, other than, let's wait and see. Because you, you're, you're right. Since we don't really know what the songs are going to be like, it could be, you know, a mix of serious and funny, or maybe it could be ponified versions of the songs, you know? <laughs> Okay, I would agree with you on that, but no, they, they're taking it seriously. Like, like the whole Silent Night, like, I don't think they're gonna joke or pony fight them. No, well, you no, never know. You, it could be you never thing. know. It's that thing of like, it could be Silent Night, but they could give it like a techno remix. No. <laughs> oh gosh. No. Or, or, you know, it could, <laughs> or Final Scratch, yeah, Final Scratch would do a remix, or it could be like you've got the, um, Jolly Old Seat Nick, but they've actually, um, done a heavy metal cover. Respect oh. at all. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but okay. Um, one good thing about it is the album is produced by Emmy Award nominated composer and songwriter Daniel Ingram. So yay, Daniel Ingram is in here. He has his touch. So yay. Awesome. That will help. You can always count on Daniel. <laughs> yeah, he, like, most of his songs for season 5, they're, they're all hits. Like, I haven't heard a song that I didn't like. Yeah, I can't even think of a song that I didn't like from the show. They're either yeah. e- either just, you know, average songs that help, you know, the episode along, or they're fantastic songs which we still remember, like, like, <laughs> like, Winter with wrap, wrap Up. God, everyone still remembers that one. It's been four yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, uh, he, he has memorable songs, but you, you have memorable and you have, like, 
okay, that was a song. I don't remember it, but it was a song. I, I, I did not not like it. Yeah, just it was average. Just a song. Yeah, just an average mm-hmm. song. A song that just fills in space. Whatever it is, I, I'm guessing that hey, he's going to do a good job. Like he hasn't done a Christmas track yet. If I, I think the closest was William Anderson. Yeah, William Anderson. Yeah, William Anderson did background music and the Heartwarming Eve episode, like that intro to the train. That was good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean the holiday team is there, and recently, like today's at. No, um, last week's episode was um, Heartbreakers, the one where Pinky and the uh, Apples celebrate Christmas together. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> not, not Christmas, Heartwarming Eve. But yeah, you get the general idea. They can do it. So I am I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm going to spend my cash on this and smile like a fool because, oh my God, this is so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm certainly looking forward to, you know, giving it a listen. We'll see, we'll see how it turns out. You'll end up in our inbox soon enough, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, true that, true that. So anyway, I am feeling my voice is starting to go down a bit. And for my sanity, I'm gonna keep it like, I'm gonna save my voice. So, Kel, is there anything you want to mention? Um, hmm. Well, um, for people that are listening to the podcast that are, of course, outside the states, um, I'm, I'm thinking about going to Galicon again next year. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. So, oh, cool. <laughs> catch me there. <laughs> um, oh, Galicon, that's cool. How many cons have you visited? Like, where and how many? Oh gosh, it's probably like five a year at this point, <laughs> something like that. But I've been to a lot of them. <laughs> Wow. Have you ever thought about going to, let's say, um, Buck or Bruni Scott? I have wanted to check them out, but I am also cash poor. <laughs> I mean, it took me saving up like seven months just to go to Galicon. So, I don't know, Galicon is also in a good time of the year for me because um, my work suspends itself during the summer because it's I, I teach, so there's no uh. there's no teaching during the summer. <laughs> Oh yeah, and true, that, true. That. And I think Buck and well, I know Brony Scott's you know coming up soon, and um, I'm currently in you know teaching and all sorts of stuff like that, so it's hard to find time for that. Um, especially once I get a full time job, but and because subbing is a little bit, a little bit um, oh, it's well, what's the word for it? Um, challenging. Well, it's not challenging so much as. Versatile. Yeah, you're able oh, to nice. pick and choose kind of where your schedule is. But since I'm going to go into full-time teaching soon, it'll be a Monday through Friday thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And you can't... Understandable. Yeah. Understandable. But I don't know. Yeah, well. But hey, maybe once I do get a more full-time job, I could visit more conventions. Or maybe it, end, it might end up being less conventions. We'll see. True, true. Well, I'm sure that uh, wherever you go, the, the cons will happily accept you there. And well, maybe put you as a special guest star. And I'm sure that uh, the Friendship Express people would love to have you on. Oh, yeah. I would I would love to visit some other um, conventions in the world other than, you know, just Galicon. Um, it's nice being able to see a lot of the states, but I've been to a lot of the conventions there multiple times now. So it would be nice to actually go someplace completely new. That would be really fun. Yeah, true. That, true. I, I've been to Buck once, and... Like you said, the experience is just mind blowing. Just to get to see another country, just to see the culture, the buildings, the just environment. That oh, that's just awesome. Oh, I agree. I perfect. I agree. If um anyone, if anyone who's listening, um, you know, to this podcast when it goes comes up, I highly recommend it. Um, going out of your country and visiting another one for a con for anything, it's really worth it. The, just the experience, like listening to people say about how awesome a country is, is not the same as going there yourself and experiencing it. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's mm. it's just different, very different, mm-hmm. and very cool. <laughs> just make sure yeah. that just make sure that you can either speak the language or you know someone who does know how to speak the uh, language. Yeah. How did you win there, man? Like, do you know German? Uh, I don't, but a lot of the Germans know English, <laughs> so that helped uh, out. Oh. That helped out a lot. <laughs> Oh, okay, cool, cool. Because I'm thinking about probably like next year going to Japan with a friend. And the problem is I don't speak Japanese. The only thing I know is anime language. And that that ain't going to help. <laughs> <laughs> Just speak anime, Adam. They'll, they'll get it. <laughs> oh, wow. No, they don't. But other than that, 
other than that, from what I understand, like, going in there, hey, it's fun. Um, I, I might be going there with a friend, so yeah, maybe no pony cons like the Japanese pony conventions, maybe not that. But hey, I, I, I just want to go there. I heard the environment is cool, food is awesome, and fun. Probably I'll meet, like, Osaka Jack, probably. Who knows? He, he lives there still. Yeah, so does. if I go. Yeah, if I go to Osaka, I can meet him probably. <laughs> he might be, yeah, and he might be able to help you with translations and stuff like that. <laughs> or, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always good to have an inn in those countries. <laughs> yeah. True, true that, true that. So anyway, ah, wow, we have been talking long for a short episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just means that we were having fun. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Exactly. But anyway. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show Twitter account is at MBS Show. SweetieBot will tweet about stuff relating to this show and probably, I don't know what she does. She's a robot. <laughs> and as for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy now is, oh my god, my throat hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you should go get this, get that some rest for that, buddy. Yeah, true that. But never mind. I'm doing this for the fans and for the people who are listening to this. I'm dedicated to my work. Yay! 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 Uh, what about you, Kyle? Me and uh, what do you want me to say? Mm-hmm. Well, where can they reach you? Oh, of course, I forgot the publicity section. I, I've let the guard <laughs> down today. <laughs> oh my! Sorry, I, sorry, Calvin. I'm. Uh, I usually tend to plug myself every 30 seconds or so usually when I'm on the NBA <laughs> show. So the fact that I've made it to the end without mentioning anything once is a testament to how much oh, I like Norman. Oh, that's true. That's true. Like, <laughs> what were you supposed to plug again? Uh, well, I'm technically meant to plug Moon Knight Scribe's Creative Vibes. Uh, the interview show where we interview the best of the bronies, which is currently on hiatus until we do season two in 2016. But, uh, oh, but yeah. you can find us on YouTube at Highland Bronies and on Facebook at Highland Bronies. That's where all our show stuff is and the community we've got here in Scotland, uh, in the Highlands anyway. But as for me, uh, personally, if you really want to see what I'm up to, uh, you can find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall. And what I've got planned is I'm entering Nano Remo this month, which is the novel writing challenge. So I'm going to be writing posts all throughout the month to see whether I can actually write 50,000 words of a new novel. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, cool. Good luck, man. Thank you to the dog for supporting me there. That was enthusiasm yeah. there. Oh, yeah. He just gave, he just yeah. gave that one lone bark. Oh. Oh, yeah. He goes. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it sounds like it's starting to get a, a little crazy here. So maybe it is best that we're at near the end. <laughs> and Kelly, can they reach you? Oh, where can you reach me? Um, I'm on, I'm on the Twitter, of course. I have, um, um, I'm at Cal, I'm at Calpain EPD. So just look me up there. You can contact me at Calpain at EquestriaDaily.com. Wow, the, the, the dog's really supporting you there, Kyle. I know. I, I appreciate my fans, big, small, <laughs> and of uh, any species. So. Yeah, sorry about that. He's just enthusiastic. <laughs> no, no. Hang on. What's that you're saying there, doggy? Is that like and subscribe to the NBS show? Yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely oh, do that. Oh, wait. I, I'm hearing a different tale. I, I think he says... Uh, go buy Amy Larson's book, Pony Rail Academy. <laughs> that too. Ah. <laughs> Available on Amazon. <laughs> Dogs do say a lot of things. Yeah, see, now he's agreeing with you. Now he's agreeing with you. True. <laughs> uh, anyway, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Yes, thank you. YouTube and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can catch us on com. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I've been Kyle Payne. <laughs> and I've been Kyle. And we'll catch you guys next week with another amazing episode. I, I got no idea. Usually T is where Ro takes us out, but he's not here. But anyway, I guess I'll take you guys out. Um, We'll see you guys next week with another... Oh, wow, I am repeating oh, myself. Anyway. Do, do you need a punchy and outro? Yes, right, okay. Please, right, uh, okay. You have been watching the MBS show. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Goodbye! Bye. Bye, guys.